Well, it's not as bad as that. This is the ultimate <laughs> test. Yeah. <laughs> Poke your face. Breathe out. There we go. She must be some tattooed, short hair, more masculine looking female in order to want to be a fighter. So people would underestimate me a lot. They like, well, She's a cupcake. I definitely want gold. Beautiful. <laughs> I want to be a world champion again. What's going on out there in YouTube land? Today we are with UFC former champion, Strike Force former champion, every kind of champion you can think of. Also a mother of two now, Misha Tate. She's making her comeback. She's been retired for five years now. She's still young, still athletic. Four and a half, four and a half. Four and a half, excuse me. <laughs> I was like, I don't want to be any out of this game any longer than a half. Not a half a decade, we're not there yet. <laughs> yeah. And her therapist, Dr. Sean Plake, who has worked with me for seven years now. Seven, yeah. So he's the man out here in Las Vegas. He's been taking care of her, getting ready for her return. Um, so we're gonna ask her some questions. He's gonna do some work on her. We're gonna keep you guys entertained. Oh uh, yeah. Ready? Right. Let's do it. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So, so Misha, um, you know, you're considered one of the pioneers of MMA, but you were really young when you won the Strike Force title. You were 24, 25, right? Somewhere in that range? Yeah, yeah, I think so. What has it been like watching the change in MMA over the years, you know, from women coming in at all, and then Dana, of course, saying we're never gonna have a women's division, and then, you know, moving over to the EFC and being the big dog and, and getting the championship. What, is, what has that been like? Well, it's been quite a journey for me. I feel like, um, Obviously, I was, you know, I was 19 years old when I started this sport, and I came in at a time when women's MMA was getting little to no recognition. Um, I mean, we had women hadn't even fought in strike force yet. You know, the biggest promotion we could get into was like Hook and Shoot or Bowdog, which was uh, eventually on HD Net. Um, and then it then I went from that promotion to Strike Force, and I got in there, and then I was actually the longest signed. Uh, female on their roster so I was there um, from that point all the way until absorption from 2008 until they absorbed into UFC I think 2013 and then um, became a part of the UFC and eventually climbed all the way to the top right captured that world championship with the finish over Holly Holm and then it wasn't too long after that that I decided to hang up the gloves. You know, I'd been doing it for a really long time and I just thought, I, I felt very burnt out. And there's some things in my personal life that just were not lending themselves to me being in my best place and my, it was really taken away from my performances. So I just uh, thought I needed to step away from the sport. So I did for four, four years and I've continued to watch, you know, and very still invested in this sport but I've continued to watch how it's evolved and I mean I think clearly the sport is continuously evolving so it would be silly of me to say like oh it hasn't evolved at all I mean it has but so have I you know a lot of people think oh they're wondering has the sport passed me by and the only way I can prove it is July 17th when I go out there and fight you know then yeah. I can prove that it hasn't but I mean, even if you just look at my division, the same women that were in that top 10 are very close to the same women who were in the top 10 when I left. And I have evolved so much as a human being, so much as a person, I think that growth um, is going to help me tremendously. It already has, I think, inside the gym. So, you know, only that test will tell. Right. You know, cage door closes. You never know what's gonna happen. Everything can be perfect in a training camp, but you, I mean, or it can be terrible. and. You know, it doesn't always dictate the, the outcome of it, but I'm feeling really confident, feeling really good. Stars are aligned, and I think, you, you know, I believe that this is this is my calling. And, and you know, you're coming back now. Is it for the love of the game, or is it that you're like, no, I'm, I've got another title running me, I'm going to get the belt one more time? Is that where your mindset is at? I definitely want gold. Beautiful. <laughs> I want to be a world champion again, you know. I, I love the game, too, but... You know, I don't think you get into it, for, at least for me, I, I can't see myself um, just doing it to do it. I really want to become a world champion again, so that's that's inside my two-year plan. Okay. Obviously, there's some, some moms, so, so Nuna's being one of them, that is a champ, but a birth mother, somebody that's actually had to carry a child and, and breastfeed and all those, is there, is there any other females that have held the belt um, that you know of? That are mothers that have held the belt? No. So you would be the first yeah. mom champ, essentially, right, if you can get right, that belt right, back. Right. Tell me how you're managing your life and, and keeping things together when you've got so many responsibilities on your plate. Um, it, it involves a lot more um, coordination on my part, and my kids are a lot more of what I do. They're here with me a lot of times when I'm sparring. 
Um, so I just have to rely on more help, you know. I, mm-hmm. I can't act like, oh, I'm just, you know, so amazing that I can do this all by myself. <laughs> like, I can't. Okay, so tell us about your nickname. So, you know, a lot of people have like, you know, so the Belizean Bruiser and all these hardcore nicknames. Tell us about your nickname and why you have a different <laughs> type of nickname than other fighters. Yeah. So my nickname's Cupcake. Um, and it came about basically from being underestimated. Back in the day, you know, people thought that fighters had to appear a certain way. And the women's fighting was not even very recognized. So they really had this preconceived notion that well, fighters had to be this way. And then, God, what would a woman's fighter, how would she represent herself? She must be some tattooed, short hair, uh, you know, like kind of more masculine looking female in order to want to be a fighter. So people would underestimate me a lot. They like, well, she's a cupcake. That's the way you don't want to be called in a tough sport. You don't want to be the cupcake on the wrestling team or fighting team. Right. But I feel like that's how people judged me. You know, they judge, they judge a book by its cover, so sure. to speak. I just kind of decided to embrace it as opposed to being offended by it. I just said, you know what, fine. We're gonna throw some tough questions now. So Mount Rushmore of MMA, you get to put four names on there. We'll do male and female to split it up a little bit. If you okay. have four males, who goes on your Mount Rushmore is the greatest four MMA males of all time? Uh, I, f- I think George St. Pierre, yes. um, Demetrius Johnson, um, I would say, oh man, that's tough. I really have a lot of respect too for um, for Daniel Cormier, just how he was always an undersized heavyweight, but he always just held his own, I mean, and, and dominated, and he's very phenomenal. So sometimes I just feel in that moment that he deserves a, deserves a lot of recognition in that. Either Randy Couture uh, or... Could be could be Namagamadoff. It's just, it's tough. I mean, Khabib's got so much. I mean, he's a clearly accomplished so much. But I think about Rushmore also comes down to like personal. Like some of it is what am I? What am I? How am I deciding this? You know, and it's, sometimes it's just how I identify with somebody or the connection I feel like resounds with them. You know, sure. so I think that's part of my criteria. So I, that's why Randy's up there, so accomplished and at his age. That's incredible at his age, what he was able to do at that time. Was Dual just, divisions, yeah. Yeah. All right, just relax there. Very good. Shoulder down. There we go. Perfect. And then we'll do some traction. Okay, so um, Mount Rushmore for, for females, I would say Amanda, Amanda. Um, I'll throw a curveball in there. Megumi Fuji. You guys nice. Know. No, do you know that yeah. one? Yeah. I mean, she was the first and only professional to go 22 and 0 in her career, and she was just <laughs> such a little badass. Flying heel hooks. It's crazy. Like yeah. she's a little flying squirrel. I think she. I. I just admire her so much. She was an idol for me. Nice. Um, I think Rhonda definitely deserves to be on there. And I think um, it's tough because I feel like Valentina is certainly very accomplished. But again, when I talk about what it is that inspires me in multiple ways about somebody, it Rose, Rose Namajunas. There it is. She's okay. just incredible. It's not that she's you know, completely flawless and she's never lost fights. But for me, it's how as a human being, she's adapted and always become stronger. She's the first woman ever to have lost the championship and come back and got it again. Right. You know, so she's right. setting. And even the guys, that doesn't really, I, I struggle rare. to think of anybody really doing that. So I think that's pretty incredible. Yeah, I think Randy is one yeah. of them. Yeah. Boy, I'm gonna have to dig deep. Now, there's yeah. a couple. There's two or three, maybe. Yeah. But it's pretty rare. Once, it's rare. once it's gone, it's it's. I mean, it, it's the pinnacle of the hardest thing to do in sports. So, so, you know, and so. especially I think psychologically, once you've done it once, when you're poor and hungry and fighting yeah. for it, there's a yeah. lot more motivation. Yeah. Once you've got a little money in the bank account, and you've already uh, checked off the list. But she did you it, know. you know. But this is what's similar, I think, where I identify is she took the time off, like a quite a bit of time, right, right. you know, we well over well over a year, a year and a half, or maybe more. Yeah. And she really just figured out, you know, she did some soul searching. You know, I took longer off, obviously, I had a family and things like that. But I I, I identify with the importance of needing to do that. Okay, a little breather here. 
Stay relaxed, teeth closed. Not that big. Yeah. Little release? Mm -hmm. Produce your life. Right. <laughs> Stay relaxed there, deep breath. There you go. There you go. That's nice. Alright, right there. Breathe out. There we go. A little tougher on that side, but got it. Yeah. Just come up and just see how the hips are moving. I think the super pops here. You can do it still. Yeah. You did it? Yeah, we can. Feel good? Yeah. Okay. Alright, so here, fold those arms. Relax yourself, you're gonna fall back into me. There we go. Oh. Have a seat. Yes. And so Eric and Ryan have really, obviously Eric, um, you know, sure. running practices, having Francis and, cool. um, and obviously Aljamain training here now too, has that been pretty cool? Um, seeing the success of the people that are training here and, you know, watching Scream Guitar rise to the yeah. top again after, you know, 13 yeah. years. Man, I'm, I mean, it's, it's so cool, but I'm used to it. I feel like this, I knew it's that all along, like this room has always been a very talented room you know room of men and women um you know we it's been a long time obviously since we had a heavyweight world champion so that's pretty cool but this is a gym full of killers and i know it's just a matter of time until you know many of them are rising to the top rising to the occasion but it just takes time to get there so i mean i i say i would have called it you know a while ago yeah yeah you know obviously <laughs> you've done a lot of like booth work commentary work and stuff like that so you're pretty comfortable in front of the camera and you're yeah. one of the more articulate fighters out there what's it like having the you know the countdown crew and the embedded crew following you around again after a five-year hiatus is that uh well it's not as bad as that so this is the ultimate test <laughs> digging into your armpit as you're trying to talk yeah <laughs> Poker face. Yeah. Um, it's not as bad as the last wing yeah. on Hot Ones, but it's probably close. <laughs> no, it's a, uh, you know, I feel like I'm just picking up right where I left off. Yeah. And it's just been a matter of managing, you know, I've, I've slow, I've, I spaced out interviews or times or whatever. Uh -huh. And, you know, they're shadowing me. So it's kind of just as my life, you know, let us know what you're doing this day. Okay. You know, you guys figure it out if you want to come or you don't want to come. I just go about my day and they're just kind of fly on the wall. So does it feel more like a return to normalcy for you then? Because it's just like you, you've done all this before, yeah. you've been here before? It's not unfamiliar and they're super nice. You know, they're, they're people. So even though there's a camera there, I just feel like, you know, it's just like a couple, you know, friends hanging out. You right. Know? So it's pretty nice. It's awesome. pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Make sure you guys check in on the, uh, the countdown show because you're going to see these two uh, doing some other kind of cracking on there too. So yeah. And where can they find you on social media? You have a YouTube channel going now? I do actually. I'm growing up. I have <laughs> I have hired a social media person to help me to create content. So nice. recently kind of rebooting my channel that I just never gave much, you know, much love to. Sure. Whatever, so And what's the name of it? Just It's the Misha Tate Show. Okay. Yeah. We'll we'll stick the link in the bio below. So I'll put both yeah. these guys' channels down there so you guys can go follow Perfect. them keep up with the with the process and the the journey back towards the gold um so she'd be behind the scenes content training stuff commentary know, all that you know kind of just the story like people wonder what what's going on after four and a half years yeah. you know so there's a lot of things i feel like people want to know kind of see you know predict the, if i'm gonna have a successful comeback or not so nice. i am i hate to spoil it Boom. Confidence. <laughs> but uh you know people are just very curious i think in what's going on in my life a lot of a lot of changes so and then otherwise on social media it's just you know misha tate instagram twitter are you a tiktoker i do it's misha tate 2.0 yeah you do yeah. dances and stuff on them too no not yet okay. i just do workout videos with music okay but hey, you know, I'm on TikTok, so there we go. I want to do Patreon, though. Patreon. about that one? That's Boom. pretty cool. So that'll be next on the bucket list. <laughs> I like it. So. And make sure you guys check out Dr. Sean's OnlyFans. <laughs> yeah. Please, please, subscribe. Let's go. <laughs>